Hi everyone, it's Miss Jennifer coming back at you this week. Hope everyone had a really good Christmas a couple days ago. I wanted to tell you a little bit about my Christmas. We got two cats, and so we didn't decorate that much, but we got this little tree because we thought it was cute. But guess what? Every single day, the cats would hunt the tree, they would knock it down, and then they would eat these pine cones off the tree. Every single day, without fail. And do you know why they did that? Because they don't understand our house rules. One of which is, don't knock down Christmas trees and eat pine cones. The cats don't understand that rule. We explain it to them. They just couldn't get it. But that was one of the rules of our house. And I bet you have house rules too. Rules like wash your hands, clean up after yourself, don't hit your brother. And we have these rules because it helps us live with each other in harmony. And you know what else has a lot of rules? Driving. There's a lot of rules on the road, right? So I have two kids who can drive now. I know they're super old and so am I. But two kids, they can drive. And so they had to take classes online and on the internet. And they had to read this book, it's the California Driver's Handbook. And this book told them all about stop signs and when you can turn and when you can't turn and speed limits and just how to be safe on the road. Now let's pretend that you had never driven in a car. You didn't know anything about stop, line, sign, ugh, stop signs or stop lights. You didn't know any of the rules of the road, like how fast you can go and when to stop. And someone just gave you a car and you just drove. What do you think would happen? I think this would happen, right? Not good. If you don't know the rules, you don't know how to keep yourself safe, you don't know how to keep others safe, and bad things can happen. So today, in today's Bible story, we're going to learn about the Israelites and what they learn about God's rules and kings. So we've been doing all Christmas stories. You've been learning about Advent and Jesus' birthday and how God sent Jesus to be our Savior. So now we're rewinding back to where we were uh, in late November, and that's in the Old Testament in 2 Chronicles. Now, if you remember, when we started this series, it's because Israel wants something. They want a king. And they want a king because all the other nations had a king. And that made God sad because he wanted to be their king. But they asked and they whined and they complained and God said, okay, I'm going to give you guys a king, but just know that he's going to put your sons in the army and he's going to take um, your labor from you and taxes and all kinds of things. But he gave him a king. And if you remember in the beginning, there was King Saul and he started out good, and then he kind of went south. And then after him was King David, and King David loved God. And he wasn't perfect, but he constantly repented and turned back to God and followed God. So now we're going to learn about kind of David's great, 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 great grandsons and the kings of Israel. And we're going to learn if they were good kings or if they were bad kings. And I want you to watch and pay attention. What made a good king a good king and what made a bad king a bad king? And then I'll see you after the video. So let's watch. The southern kingdom of Judah had many kings. Most of the kings were evil. They did not follow God. Kings like Ahaz set up places to worship idols and the people forgot about God. When King Ahaz died, his son Hezekiah became king. Hezekiah was not like his father. Hezekiah did what was right. He trusted God and obeyed his commands. Hezekiah made some changes around the kingdom. He led the people to worship God again and God blessed him. After Hezekiah died, his son Manasseh became king. Manasseh was the most evil king of Judah. He set up the idols Hezekiah had destroyed and led the people to worship false gods. He ruled for 55 years. Then his son, Amon, became king. He was evil too. And he ruled for two years. Then his son, Josiah, became king. Josiah was just eight years old when he became king. He was a good king, like his ancestor, David. Josiah lived in a way that pleased God. When Josiah was a teenager, he started to follow God. Then he made some changes around the kingdom. Josiah decided to get rid of the things that were not pleasing to God 
He got rid of idols and the places where people worshiped false gods. When Josiah was a young man, he wanted to repair the Lord's temple. As the temple was being repaired, the high priest found a very important document. I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple, the high priest said. When King Josiah heard the words of the law, he tore his clothes. God is very angry with us, Josiah said. Our ancestors did not obey God. A prophetess brought a message from God. God said, I'm going to punish the people of Judah because they turned away from me and worshiped other gods. But God had a special message for Josiah. Because you were humble and were sorry for your sin when you heard the law, you will die in peace. You will not see the punishment I am bringing on the people. Josiah went to the temple and read the words of the law to all the people. Then Josiah promised to follow God and obey him like the book of the law said to do. The people at the temple also agreed to follow God and obey him. As long as Josiah was king, the people followed God and obeyed him. Hezekiah and Josiah loved God and wanted to follow his commands. They wanted God's people to love God and obey the law too. When Jesus came to earth, he fulfilled the law by obeying it perfectly. All right, did you guys see it? What makes a good king a good king and a bad king a bad king? It's how well they follow God, right? God and his word. So if he was a good king, then he was following God's word and the people could be blessed and the land could be blessed. But a bad king who wanted to do his own thing and was selfish, then God couldn't bless them and the people suffered. And so what happened with Josiah? He followed God's word. That reminds me of our verse, which is 2 Chronicles 7.14 and says, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And remember, that's what Josiah did. He found God's word and he read it and he said, oh no, we're not following God, everybody. And they repented and they followed God's word and God was able to bless them. And that reminds us of, of us too. So. As the video stated, Jesus followed the law perfectly. He followed the law perfectly so that he could be our savior. So that if we repent like Josiah, if we repent and we turn to him, then he will heal all our souls. And then we can follow God's word and his ways. And when we follow God's ways, then we learn how to love well, how to please God, how to care for what he cares for, love who he loves, the immigrant, the orphan, the poor, the widow. And we can live lives that God can bless. So. As we start this new year, let's think about ways how we can read the Bible every day and know more of what God wants for us. And by the power of his Holy Spirit, we can go out and live lives that please him, that love others well, and that point people to Jesus. So let me say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you that we have your word so that we can know who you are, how you love us, and we can know how to love others and love you well. Help us this year that we would stay in your word that we would be a light to others so that they can see how much Jesus loves them and want to be part of this family too. So watch over everyone, keep us safe from COVID and bring us together again. In Jesus name we pray, amen. All right, bye, hope to see you guys soon. I know some classes might be opening, so yay, we're gonna to get to see each other at church. So have a good week and we'll see you later, bye.